Now, when I say essential, I mean four simple upgrades, two visual tweaks, and then two terminal add-ons that I never live without. Now, I also mentioned that there's one big caveat to this terminal programming setup, and I will get to that after the first two visual tweaks that we're gonna talk about. All right, tip number one is customizing the prompt itself. You'll find that most Unix installations out of the box, whether that be a Linux distribution or a Mac OS, come with fairly bland prompts. But the good thing about that is it's super easy to change and also customize to your liking. I'm using ZSH shell, so what you'll see me type will only really work for ZSH. However, the core concepts are the same for Bash. If you don't know what shell you're using, you can type echo shell. Now, if you want more information on ZSH or Bash, how to switch between them, you know, differences, I will leave a link in the video description to an article that goes over all that. First, we're gonna create our config file using touch. Then after we go ahead and create that file, we're gonna open it for editing. I'll just use Vim since I'm right here in the terminal and it'll allow me to show the config file side by side with the prompt for more visual clarity. Now to keep it really simple, all you need to do is define the prompt variable. So as you can see, if I, I can define the prompt variable to be whatever I want. And so if I go ahead and just save this and run it, it'll be nothing fancy. Now you're probably gonna want actual information in your prompt rather than just static text. But the good thing about CSH and Bash is that they have this notion of what's called prompt escapes. So prompt escapes are essentially variables that will be replaced with dynamic information at runtime. So to keep it simple, let's just say I want my username and the current directory. So usernames is gonna be percent %n and then the current directory is gonna be percent %1 tilde. And so if I just write that in, save it, and if you're using Vim, that's escape colon w that saves the file and we go to our prompt and type source zshrc to tell the terminal to use this new configuration file you can see that i'm now displaying my username and the top level directory that i'm in now that's the basics gist of it now there's more prompt escapes there's a ton more prompt escapes actually that are available so i'll flash a couple useful ones on the screen and then also link an article down in the description that shows you a lot more so you can customize this as you like now, tip number two is just customizing the colors of the prompt, and this can be done quite easily in ZSH and Bash, so let's just jump into it again. You can see my actual prompt here is slightly different from the basic example that I showed. Instead of showing just the current working directory, I like to show the entire path, and then I also like to show whether or not I'm logged in as a privileged user, which is what you see um, down there on that second line. Now, colors are super easy. They're almost like HTML tags. So you surround the parts of the prompt that you want to color with a percent capital F tag, and then you'll terminate that tag with a percent lowercase f, and anything in between will be changed to that color. So if I wanted to turn my username green and in my directory cyan, I'd insert as follows. Now, most shells support basic colors, and I'll flash what those are now on the screen, but certain other terminal programs like iTerm2 support a much wider range of colors, and I'll also leave a link to a article that explains that in the description if you want to do more than the basic um, five to 10 colors. All right, so that's gonna do it for the two visual tweaks. And I did mention that there was one big caveat with this terminal programming setup, and there is. I don't do the majority of my programming within the terminal itself. IDEs have come a long way. And that's not to say that if you do the majority of your editing in Vim and Emacs, you're doing something wrong. It's just all about what you like. Your computer, your terminal, your IDEs, they're just tools to help you get the job done. And however you can customize your setup to work best for you, um, that's what you should do. So let's get back to the last two terminal add-ons. Number three is adding Git information to your prompt. Now, as you can see, I'm in a directory tracked by Git, and so it would be great to add a little bit of information about where I'm at in my prompt so I always have a quick reference. Now, a quick caveat with this tip is that this is only gonna work for ZSH and not Bash, so make sure you check what shell you have before proceeding further. So once again, I'm gonna open up my ZSHRC and I'll copy, I'm just gonna copy all this in and I'll spare you the time of me typing it out, but I'll kind of explain what's going on. All right, cool. So what we're doing here is we're essentially, after we load in the version control information, we will format that into a little dynamic string that will then append onto the prompt. And actually, if we go down here to the bottom, what I'm gonna do is set the R prompt or the right aligned prompt to just show my branch information. And just like my other prompt, you can turn it any color you want, so why not yellow? Cool, so if I go ahead and save and then reload my configuration file, you can see that now I am in a Git directory and I know I'm on branch master. I can also go ahead and check out a new branch and that'll be reflected over there on the right. And as I switch between branches, you can see that I have that information right at my fingertips. It's very useful. Okay, so that brings us to number four, or honestly, number one. If you're not using Tmux or another terminal multiplexer, you are certainly missing out. And I'm gonna give you a really basic tutorial here today that's really gonna change the way you work if you've not heard of this before. 
So first we're gonna install Tmux. So I'm on Mac OS and I'm just gonna use Homebrew, but Tmux's GitHub page explains how to install this on other systems. All right, now that we've got Tmux installed, let's talk about the basics. To launch Tmux or a session of Tmux, you're just gonna type Tmux and you know it's open when you have this green bar across the bottom. And now you've got a lot of power. So say I wanna start a web server like I just did here, but I wanted to keep it running and then access another prompt. So to split the terminal in two, all I have to do is type the sort of hotkey, which is control B and then quote. Now control B quote splits the pane horizontally and then control B percent sign goes ahead and splits it vertically. And you can basically do this as much as you want. As you can see, I opened up a file for editing down here in the bottom and it's pretty small. So if I wanna maximize a pane and take up the full window width, I just type control B and then Z and that brings it up full width. And then of course I can type control B Z again to sort of minimize it. Now to cycle between panes or to cycle between the focus, you just type control B O. Now if I wanna go ahead and kill a pane or remove a pane, all I have to do is type control B X and then confirm with yes. So as you can see, the basic idea with Tmux is that you have a hotkey, which in this case by default is control B. And then after your hotkey, you can type a couple letters and that'll affect how you use Tmux. Now these three or four simple commands to split panes and focus are gonna get you a really long way with Tmux. But one of the best things about it is that your Tmux session is sort of an independent process that can be detached and then reattached. So as you can see here, if I go ahead and just type control B D, to detach Tmux, my server that I started is still running. And then I can go ahead and actually just reinitialize that session and pick up right where I left off by just typing Tmux attach. So you can go ahead and spin up a web server, leave your SSH connection or get disconnected, and then you can come back, your server's still running, your workspace is still there. It is a huge time saver. Now, and that's basically it. And as you can see, if you had a Tmux session running, especially if you do a lot of work on cloud machines, you know, having access to that workspace that's detachable and retachable is a really great addition to your workflow. Now, I do a bit more customization with Tmux, and if you want to see what I do there, check out my follow-up video or the blog article I linked on that. All right, that's my four terminal essentials. And if you're looking for something to watch after this, definitely check out my video on FZF. FCF is a terminal add-on that adds fuzzy finding, kind of like Mac OS Spotlight Search, you know, right in your shell. As for me, the essentials really are that simple, just like this video, which is why that's all I have for you today, and I'll see you next time.